Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring to you the biggest sentiment stories and, of course, trending conversations. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my very amazing co anchors with me, Ife Omai, and Ife Oli Washoke. Sad, hey. scared. <sighs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mm. Are you good? Bless you. Mm. I'm about to be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> mm. Okay. So it's safe to say the hotel dollars are pressing our neck. Mm. Um, Nigerian businessman, philanthropist, and um, former chairman of Fort Oil PLC, Femi Otedola, took his daughters shopping. Mm. Now, of course, Tolani, <laughs> Temi, and Florence, they all went shopping. And what they got from the shopping is not shoe, it's not a mm. bag, it's not, it is Ferraris. <laughs> Ferraris. There's plural there, yeah? Now, the announcement was made on Twitter by Florence Otedola, popularly known as DJ Copy, as Nigerians cannot keep calm. The Ferrari car um, in the marketplace is currently approximately worth about 131 million naira and above. Here are some of the reactions on social media. Now, at Abu underscore Swag says, quote, in the middle of a pandemic, when many people are unemployed and currently struggling to survive, do you know how many families um, he can lift out of poverty or how many schools, hospitals would be well equipped with this money? Absolute waste of resources. End of quote. Now, responding to that particular tweet, Alex Loba Loba said, Otedola lifted loads of people out of poverty in this pandemic. Go and read about the forerunners of Kakovid. Mm -hmm. um, see the amount he donated to the initiative. Come back and compare it to the amount he used to buy these toys mm -hmm. for his kids. Celebrate with them and pray for God's blessing. End of quote. Adam Andres tweeted a photo of his own children saying, <laughs> um, quote, not hotel, but I got bicycle for my girls, Ferrari loading, and I tap into that one. That's really cool. At Yemi Hazan said, quote, Femi Otedola did um, shopping, bought cars for his daughters because he could afford to. Your parents did shopping, bought clothes, shoes, etc. because it's the best they could. They can buy you cars too, but realities are di just different. The comparison and bans is disrespectful to them. Now, the reactions are just too many. <clears throat> All you need to do is pick up your phone. And look at it. You will see it and see for yourself. But the general so far is simple. God punish poverty. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Amen. Congratulations to the Otter Dollar sisters, mm. right? Yeah. This My neck is, is still <laughs> under their under their feet. That's not, why it's not, like not, not necessarily. I think we're all born in different circumstances and different family. Is that me, it's sharp pressing my neck. No, no, it's fine. That's why I said not necessarily. So maybe you, but yes, uh, so. I think, I think, I think, I think we should be content. And I like how David Doe, and I like how David Doe responded because he said, um, "Congratulations, copy. I pray I'm able to do the same thing for my daughters." Do you understand? Yeah. I think that's the way everyone should look at this. No, he did not pray. Said, "I will do the same for my." Yeah, daughters. I will do the same. There's yeah. a difference. There's a difference. Because yeah. he knows he's yeah. done that. So, yeah, mm. I, and I will do the same for my kids as well. And um, yeah, so um, I think that's the way everyone should look at it. And um, for the people that are bashing out, tell the laugh that I've done. Well, you can't please, you can't satisfy everybody. No matter how much you try to donate into the community or into the society and uplift people out of poverty, there will still be people that will still come out and say negative stuff. And I like how the guy wrote it, like, go and read about car COVID or Ted Dollar is doing. He did a lot and he's still doing. So spending this on his I'm kids really is not... Deep. Yeah, <laughs> spending this on his kids is, is not a big deal. Hmm. And I just hope that we're all rich enough to do more for our own children. Hmm. I mean, I would like to agree that, you know, this <laughs> the ring around the roses uh, mindset, but not everybody's going to be able to do that, unfortunately. That's exactly my thoughts. Um, but I, I, I feel the pressure, I'm not going to lie. This one entered my soul. I it was shopping, babe. Um, shopping has been way, redefined. I, I, like, I like the concepts. I mean, the, the lady that tweeted that, you know, our parents bought us clothes or whatever, I think it's the same mentality. Mm. It just depends on the level of deepness your mm. pocket carries but you want the best for your children mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm. and i like that he did that i like that he did that for all his girls and it was like a grand thing for all of them i don't know it just seems like a really sweet thing to do it with your sweet, kids fam. um it just happened to be on a on a steroid level because <laughs> so, no, some of us we can't just afford the tires just yet so i'm still looking at maybe the rims or like the side really? but we're looking you know it's it's, <laughs> it's not really my cool. <laughs> It's what it is. I'm happy about that. I think for me, the person that really stood out of all the conversation was uh, Mr. Easy. Mm -hmm. When somebody responded and said, it depends me if they see Mr. Easy 
driving this car, whatever. He was like, what's mean I've already booked the car? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I like that, like, you know, attitude towards mm. it. I don't think it's um, necessarily a bad thing to want to, obviously, tap into that blessing and, mm-hmm. and everything. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend like as if, no, oh, it's going to come for everybody. No, mm. it's not. I uh, like, and I it's like, okay for you to, for it to prepare you. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's that's prepared. Mm. So I like the way you brought in the Mr. Easy conversation. That's mm. another angle. Maybe we should touch on it quickly. So I saw people talking on Twitter saying one man decided to carry it on his head, like his personal problem, saying that Mr. Easy has been working hard for a long time, mm. having to write pitches, do startups. I mean, he's, he's always been an entrepreneur before music actually clicks but a lot of people will always associate whatever he does and how he wins to the fact that he's dating um Otadola's daughter you know and that that is disrespectful and all and i replied that tweet and i said women have been going through this for From the longest one. of time when we talk about it be like hey but you're still chopping the money mm-hmm. now that he's going through it he's not complaining please <laughs> let us rest our mind our businesses and i yeah. think um most times when or some of the things that i see men go through now actually with the gender equality creeping in a bit in nigeria subtle, it's not like a yeah. subtle yeah mm-hmm. it makes me happy that they are beginning to understand these things from where it's coming from. Absolutely. Another one as well that brought me back was when um, a guy was talking about um, when a guy asks you out. Uh, that he was talking about gay guys now. If a gay, that a gay guy has the right to walk up to a straight guy to say, I like you. That it is the prerogative of, of the straight guy to say, no, I'm, I don't do this. I'm into mm. girls. That they shouldn't take it personal. And that reminds me again, because guys will come to a girl and say, I like you and all that. And if you refuse, it becomes insult. It becomes all that. And now they cannot take it <laughs> that a gay guy is telling mm-hmm. them I like you and just mm-hmm. turn it down. They'll tell you it's punch, mm-hmm. it's blow. Mm-hmm. I'll remove your teeth. Do you understand? <laughs> so a lot of these things, yes, it's weird. We are correcting it, but I also like that they're happening personally. Of yeah. Yeah. Well done. With that well done. Angle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on to the next story. On the 10th of October 2020, Nigerian singer, fondly called Mama Africa, Yemi Alade, will be speaking at the first um, free TED Talk alongside Prince William, um, former Vice President of the United States of America and an environmentalist, Albert Arnold Gore, um, Jaden Smith, Chris Hemsworth, um, climate change advocate Mark Ruffalo, and American actor Don Cherdo. It will be a long day conversation about climate change, a global call to action to change how we tackle climate change. And I think this one is going to happen virtually, I think, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like um, that, the, that we're beginning to touch on certain topics. Climate change is very important, and I like the lineup of the people that would be speaking. Big congratulations to Yemi Alade for mm-hmm. making that list, of course. And um, I just hope that um, she does us proud, you know, do her research properly and just go there and speak with facts and let everyone know what it is we're going through in this part of the world when climate change is involved. So, I hope so, because um, for one, I've always called myself environmental police. I've been very big on climate change and everything. It's one of those things that have really touched my core. I, I I struggle between feminism and environmentalism in terms of those two things that really dear to my heart i'm so sorry but when i saw yemi Alade, i was kind of i was i was thrown aback i'm not gonna lie she's the only person that doesn't have any history at all maybe maybe um, you guys can I correct think she me does. i can't remember clearly now but i don't know if you remember that campaign that was done by an energy company where they were also trying to save energy regarding yemi Alade was yeah. also the only nigerian on that so for mm-hmm. it to keep you see, no, no, that's what, that's, I, that's, think, that's what okay. I want to say. She's the only person for me that I haven't seen it happen to her personally. So, I mean, in terms of advocating personally. Okay. I've seen her get featured on stuff. It's not the same thing as Chris Hemsworth, who, who uses his Instagram, his YouTube. He talks about it in his daily life. Even when he works on projects, he's, he's tried to make a, 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 what's it called? Waste-free life in terms of everything that he does. I've never really you seen. You say the same for Jaden Smith. Yes, Jaden okay. made a water a water company based on how to get water without using plastic bottles, and he has a bottle thing that's for that that's not made of plastic. When they had that Chicago flooding thing, mm-hmm. he was mm-hmm. leading that movement. He's big on that. I can give I can give a name for I can give a story for, for everyone, every single then. person. Yemi Alade doesn't have any, not that I can see on the internet. And that for me was a bit weird. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing maybe she does have something behind the scenes or she's, uh, what's it called? She has an interest and she's not just a, a leading figure. Like, you know, mm-hmm. some people actually, are, let's say they like the feminism movement, but yeah. they're not going around shouting what they believe in and yeah. whatever. So I'm guessing maybe she's one of those people. And I'm hoping well, that with this... she's a silent this, partner in a project we don't know about. Yes, I, and I, I, I get that, which is...
which is why I'm, I'm confused now. All of a sudden, she has a really big voice on, t on TED Talk. But I'm hoping that this is the beginning of that for her. And then when she does come back to the African mar um, um, market, um, um, target audience, she can really start to teach us how to do daily steps of um, reducing waste. And I'm really talking about climate change because I know that we need that. A good example for someone that used to be on the set is your, your close friend. I know that was picking bottles and things like that. That's kind of like the vibe I was expecting from Yemi Alade to make it to that list at all. So it, it threw me off a bit, but I mean, I'm happy that a black Nigerian is on that table. The, the lineup is pretty huge. Yeah. Congrats to Yemi Alade. I just hope you make us proud. Okay. Um, tea time continues right after this very short break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? Oh, <laughs> Ali. and plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still T Time on Plus TV Africa. Nollywood actress and movie producer Princess Orwell Ademola is of the opinion that false accusers should get the same punishment as rapists. In a video she shared on Instagram, she explained that in as much as she is against rape and all forms of sex sexual abuse and assault, she stands um, with the tr truth and accusing someone wrongly is disastrous. Mm, it is. Mm. I think um, like every other crime because um, if... Um, you plan to kill somebody, or if you kill somebody, mm. and I'm aware, you know, we planned it together, even mm. though I did not stab the person, mm. and um, I followed you, maybe I drove the getaway car, we probably would get the same punishment. So I think the same thing should be applicable to rape as well when- Do you actually get the same punishment? Not the same, you could be reduced, but you get punished as yeah, well, right? So I think the same thing should be applicable to rape, but I do not agree that the same punishment should go for a rapist for. I know it is a very dangerous thing, it is very disastrous for you to accuse somebody wrongly, right? Because it can, destroy, <laughs> it can destroy their career, it can destroy their life, they could take their life, but um, at the end of the day, it's, it's still like, not a crime. It's still uh, not, not a crime in, not of that, rape. In, yeah. yeah, it is still not a crime. That's what we're advocating for. That we want it to be, be, begin um, to become it would, a crime. It would be, that well, right. that is if we can advocate for um, what's it called now? Castration of rapists as well. Do you understand? Any, Which has already started happening. I mean, yeah. It's happening in... I know. So when we can make that happen, then maybe we should make that happen. I mean, but I, I think let's focus on our focus first. But I agree that someone who accuses someone falsely should be of punished rape. of rape should be punished but yeah, should it be the same punishment mm. as the rapist himself mm. it, it, it i told it, i don't totally I agree. agree with that i don't i don't think it should be the same i think both of them are i mean raping someone is a severe crime it's almost done it's done physically right you're harming the person physically and that that is such a horrible crime that needs to be taken serious and the punishment should be severe. Mm. Now, when you accuse someone of rape, it's not the same as raping someone, but it's still pretty severe. So mm. I think that the punishment should be given in the same severity mm -hmm. as somebody who has been raped, but it cannot be the same, same. exact Okay, so punishment. I'm coming from this angle. So let me put it this way. If um, a person has accused someone of rape mm -hmm. and this person did not withdraw the accusation and watch the person go through everything that a rapist will go through, mm. losing your job, losing your career, being mm -hmm. uh, um, um, segregated by the society and all, and then maybe after six years. Please, I think that at some point, you need to be able to bear the same thing the person has gone through. But if, yes. if the person has not gone through the level of, what would I call it, a turmoil, mm. that a rapist... You know someone's six years can happen down. in three days. I don't you think it 
don't just sit down and say things that make somebody. Do you know what it is to even build your livelihood to a certain point? Well, no, I don't think and you come in and you break that, it down. I don't think anyone totally. is arguing that they don't deserve a severe punishment. Mm -hmm. the, the the question here is that should the same punishment be given to somebody? Okay, let's give who a particular example. Mm -hmm. I remember the guy. The same? You remember haven't the answered it. I'm saying. You think the same punishment should be given? Depending on the level of the punishment, the person that was accused have had to go through. Right. Remember the guy that was in jail for twenty years? And I then think, he came I out. So what are you saying? So we should so, just, um, uh, think, you shouldn't do I it think, again. I think you exactly lied. what we're saying. That it's not supposed to be a, ha a, a, a tap on the on the hand for somebody who has But this accused. one is practical. There's 20 years. Someone has had to serve 20 years. What would you recommend now, basically, on, if we have the that, power that. to say, due to this person that made this person lose 20 years? I think years it should also be severe as well. I can't, That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This law, but I don't know if this it's law like, if it's, is ambiguous the way we're saying it on this table right now. It but, is. Um, if it's to, if it's to be broken down, I'm sure there will be Severe. severities to, and then there will be time limits, and all of that mm -hmm. will be implemented. Right. By also the, begin putting into consideration what the person has lost. The way you go to court and say, um, your defamation have made me lose this and lose that and you have to pay for it. Mm. I think those things should also come into play. I don't know how the lawyers will word it mm. or how the policymakers will do it, yeah. but there has to be a level of saying, okay, I paid back for what I took from this person yeah. because I lied unnecessarily. Because if you take the cardinal thing, for example, where you get castrated, uh, I'm, the person has done a horrible thing, yes, but the person not actually raped someone. So I don't think they now deserve castration as well they deserve some, something oh, wow. something something terrible something you know that would, that would there will that not would, be, there um, be anything to castrate because most times it's from the opposite side but then yeah so maybe they should cut off their tongue they're coming but uh how about that <sighs> okay. you see yeah, i feel like there's is. people who have spent a lot of years <laughs> trying to figure out how to um, punish the crime mm -hmm. or whatever so i'm not going to get creative on that one <laughs> and i didn't even bother thinking about what is the practical example for someone who's been through that i mm -hmm. just know that both things are very severe and very wrong mm -hmm. and they should be treated the same way but that the punishment should be exactly the same doesn't seem i think right it should, to me. for me personally it should be almost the same as what the person that have gone the through. Same, yeah. Because you know what, you know, do you know what like, I disagree yeah, with that? Let's say, let's say the person, uh, let's say, God, God forbid, I accuse somebody of rape, right? And the person was lucky enough to really help me, um, help themselves retract the, the lie that I put and they were innocent or whatever. I still think that the person that um, accused someone wrongly should get severe punishment. So I don't know, I, I don't like the idea that until we see what the person, the lie has, how, the, how far uh, the lie has gone you. before I then get a punishment. You should still be treated really severely. So I don't, like I said, I don't I think we should leave this to the what, lawmakers. Yeah. They would be the ones to be, uh, they would be taking, in the best position. It should be taken extremely seriously so that this, the same way we're trying to get pe rapists to not feel so comfortable being invisible is the same way I would want um, whatever um, law is put in place for people who want to lie about rape to think twice about it because if they ever get caught, it's so really it's, severe. It's, like she said, it's disastrous. Basically. It is. Okay, uh, moving on to the next story. Davido prays for peaceful governorship election in Edo State. He says, and I quote, I pray that this week's Edo election are safe. Um, God be with the great people of Edo and God's blessing and good luck to all the candidates involved. End of quote. Well, I can see, see why I is stand my David on social my media. Guy. Okay. Talking about things that needs to be talked about, even <laughs> if it's diplomatically, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that he's back on social media. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. It is a breath of fresh air. I've been seeing his replies to some people when he said, I'm blah, 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 your fave or whatever. And it was kind of interesting. It's okay, boy, you know, say your thoughts or whatever. But I like that he mentioned what he, he's getting involved in politics a little bit. For me, I appreciate it more when celebrities, especially entertainment celebrities, um, start to talk about things that are a bit serious. It helps, you know, get certain audiences into things that are important. If you always talk about youths not being involved in politics, I think getting celebrities like David Doe that are in the entertainment scene, trying to get their audiences to understand what's going on. I'm sure some people even know that there was an Edo, yeah. uh, whatever, before this mm -hmm. tweet. So well, for me, this is really cool. Million people. Yeah, I mean, I, mean yeah. I, I still feel like it's really cool that he talks about things that are a bit more serious. And every time, you know, Papa Rimacha, Chuba. No, Papa, I don't think, you know, it has to be... I don't think it has to be a celebrity. I think we are all, as Nigerians, we are all worried I'm about... I'm surprised, Ife. You always <laughs> give so much <laughs> flack mm. on celebrities coming out 
and protesting, or not talking. involving themselves in politics. You, you say they, 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 they have, have a stronger risking, voice, so it's right? Not, it's not necessary. Well, I don't Please know finish, what, I mean. what was I even saying. Did you, you, said, you said that it's not about celebrities. Uh, everyone has but a voice. But how was he even done? That statement. No, that wasn't what I said. I didn't say everyone has a voice. I never said anyone, everyone has a voice. I said I don't think it's only about celebrities. Now, I think as Nigerians, we all should be worried about the Edo State governorship election, considering the timeline of events that has happened during the course of um, preparing for this election. Right. The Oba's convoy was attacked when the Oba of Lagos convoy was attacked, which was seen as an attack, attack on royalty. Yeah, in those states, okay. uh, you know, and um, the whole Oshomole and Obaseki thing, you know, Obaseki still got for that reason, which we spoke about um, with Desmond Elliott recently. Mm. So a lot is going on in that place. And then I just, it's, it takes a lot of prayers and then it's only God that can actually. So it's not just about celebrities now. I think each and every one of us should put our hands together and pray for a successful and peaceful election in those states. Um, this weekend. Hmm. I also like that. I mean, like you said, it's not about the celebrities. So someone like him tweeted it would make people that have not been paying attention actually think about it and maybe pay attention to see what has been going on. Because like you said, a lot has happened. A whole lot a whole has lot. happened. A whole show has been created in a do state that is way bigger than Big Brother Nigeria as far as I'm concerned. Yes, yes. But we've not really been paying attention like that. Of course, people that have to pay attention well, paid attention yeah. anyways. Um, even on Sunday when the eviction show was going on um the Edo State um debate governorship debate was going on as well and you had it was trending side by side although yeah. of course big brother had like one two three four on the table and then Edo and um, debate came somewhere so yes we all have to pay attention and but then we cannot take away the fact that a celebrity lending their voice to this attention would also Definitely. create a bigger and I think Change, everyone yeah, watching too should yeah. say a word of prayer for Edo State. yeah they really need it and I hope My the best people. man wins like um the video said right okay and that's how we wrap up this episode of tea time thank you for watching and please do send your opinions via whatsapp to 90 or twitter to us at plus tv africa my thank you as always to go to my co-anchors if you're omai and if you're and the entire production team thank you for watching my name is elsie godwin please please stay safe